Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Friday, the 20th of August, 2021. Thank you for tuning in. Glad to have you guys here. Now, what I want to say is, the civilization, our civilization, has peaked in 2019. Peak population, peak prosperity pre of, of what we were going to have. I mean, okay, it wasn't great, 2019, but it was peak prosperity uh, for coinciding with peak population and peak civilization it's basically over guys uh what's happening is all through the 2020s now until about 2030 we're gonna have major systemic problems and two of the well actually there's three enormous systemic problems <clears throat> one is disease and i'm not going to go into the details of disease but the disease is uh it's going to be around for a while and it's it's putting a, a a major it's it's damper on on our civilization the second major problem is is the money itself what we call money isn't really money that's the whole problem it is not money it's just a, a bunch of paper different countries have printed up and what we're getting down to the crux of this second problem and the third problem are the people out there who are being pushed. And they're going to continue to be pushed until, in the end, they have had enough. It's going to keep squeezing them. I'll call it squeezing them. So we've got these three major systemic problems. And what we're probably going to be looking at is, by the year 2030, the world is going to our civilization on the entire planet is going to be about a third the size that it is right now. That's going to be the result. And this is going to, this is going to be all the way, most probably at least most of the way through the 2020s by the time we reach the 2030s. But uh, our civilization, now here's one of the things I want to talk to you guys about, about all this. The real crisis hasn't really emerged yet. The real meat of this crisis hasn't really emerged yet. And I believe that the money is going to be what we call money, which is actually paper currency, is going to be the biggest problem that's going to bring our civilization down. This problem in the currency worldwide and we're heading headfirst into this really fast and this is what's going to put the pressure on the people this is why the people are going to become the third problem and basically what I'm talking about is more than just I would classify it as more than just civil unrest when it's worldwide and it pops out one country after another around the world because the people once they get to the point where they can't put food on the table, that's the point when the switch is flipped from off to on. It's on. It's on, baby. When they can't put food on the table, when they start going hungry. And this is right around the corner. So the people are going to be a major problem along with the currency and along with the disease. These three factors are going to come together to congeal, to bring down our civilization and all three of these problems are going to intensify in the next couple years tremendously. And then what's happened is it's naturally, it's just a natural result of these three problems that's going to yield a decrease in population where our civilization will be about one-third the size it is now. But it'll be technologically advanced. Now, here's the thing. You're saying... Glenn, you know, we've heard you say back in a number of videos ago that it's going to be a not a full-on shift where S, uh, S, uh, H, uh, T, F. It's not going to be a full-on. It's going to be like partial, here and there, spotty. It's going to be certain areas. How do you know this? How do you know that that's the way it's going to go? And I'll explain to you how I know. The 
overall, our overall civilization, if you're looking at it in a macro sense, is something like a human body. That's what it's like. The it's like a circulatory. It it actually looks like that. If you go up from the air, like at night, looking at a city. You know, and the traffic in the city, it's like blood coursing through veins. The highways are like arteries. In fact, a lot of times they'll call them arteries, you know, the, the major highways and things, you know. And if you look at our civilization like a big ant colony, you know, it's kind of like a one unified body, the whole world, the whole world civilization. Uh, the thing about it is, is if you get a, guy, a man that's freezing, you know, his body falls into a cold river or something, you know, and he's freezing. What happens is his extremities freeze first. And the core section of his body, the body will preserve heat in that core section to try to keep him alive, to keep his heart beating. The first extremities that freeze, if a person's in freezing conditions, is the tips of their toes and the tips of their fingers start to freeze first and the tip of their nose perhaps you know uh, this is the same way with our system right now the elites that run our system and keep themselves up in their ivory tower they're at the core of the system the core of the financial system the core system they realize if they let that core system go, go down, then the whole world will devolve into chaos and anarchy, and it would look something like Mad Max. They also realize that in that kind of a world, strength is what matters, not intelligence. They maintain their power base with a system that they've created over thousands of years, that relies upon not only intelligence, but also what I would call clicks. Clicks, like, you know, when a person has a click and they, they associate with other people that's in that particular group. This is the power structure of the world. It's, it's like a, it's just like in high school, you know, I used to go to high school and, and there was a click, there's clicks, you know, the, of the, of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, the pretty kids, you know, the kids that hanged out with them, you know, it's just the same way in the world here. We've got these cliques that maintain their power and support through the core of the system. They realize fully well that if there is a monster of a crisis, that they can't, might not be able to maintain the structure of what we had, like in 2019 when our civilization was at, a peak, at its peak. So what they will do is, if, if that can't be maintained, can't possibly be maintained, they'll let certain areas of the system basically die. But they'll always maintain that core that keeps them in power and keeps their power base going and keeps the structure of society going. They'll maintain it at any cost. They'll use the military. They'll do whatever they have to do to maintain their core that keeps them in their ivory tower. No matter what happens, it would have to be a tremendous disaster to break down that core. They will flood money into that core. They'll do what they'll do whatever they just just exactly what I'm telling you guys, and I make it very clear is they'll do whatever they have to do to maintain their power base or their core of the system. They can let the peripheries of the system, just like a freezing man, they can let them die. The areas that they can let die. They'll let die that the people in those areas that they don't really care about, they really care only about maintaining their position of power in that core of the system. Or the, if it was a body, it would be the core of where the person's heart is and lungs are and everything else of the system. And they'll let the arm, well, they'll, they'll let the arm go. They'll let it freeze. They'll let the leg freeze. And the leg might be where you live. But they'll do that to maintain the core because it's the whole system it will not be set up in a way to support the entire system like it is now. And so the extremities are going to freeze. And so what that's going to do is it's going to leave areas that are now possibly inhabited 
to fend for themselves. The roads will just turn from pavement back to dirt roads again. The pavement will all break up as years pass and there will be no infrastructure to repair it or anything. And in the end, what they'll do is they'll cordon those sections off. They'll put a chain link fence in and guards and guard dogs. And, you're, and if you're in one of those areas where the system basically freezes and goes down, and this is going to be reliant upon the power grid and telecommunications. The areas that are going to be without power and without telecommunications are the areas that are going to be uh, eventually cordoned off. I mean, when this first happens, if you get an area where the people rebel against the system, and if they try to keep the power grid on, the people will rob the, uh, uh, the copper out of the lines or rob the aluminum out of the lines or whatever metal they're using to carry the electricity. And there will be law and disorder break out in that area to the point where they can't maintain it or support it. What they'll do is they'll withdraw from that area. They'll basically do like a doctor does if your extremity freezes. What do they do? They cut it off. That's what they'll do to maintain support and keep the core of the system running. And so uh, what we're going to see is, is eventually a shrinking back of our civilization probably by the year 2030 it's going to be a tremendous shrinking back of our civilization in the core areas what we're going to have is a bipolarization because the people that live in the core areas are going to live in semi-luxury or luxury the rich in the core areas will probably live in luxury and they'll have all the modern conveniences and they'll have you know, uh, by then we'll have, uh, right now it's what, 5G, you'll probably have 6G or whatever, you know, and it'll be like, uh, they'll have all of the uh, inoculations and they'll have everything. And, and all their, they won't even carry papers anymore because they'll all be a number and structured. And the people that live in the, in the Badlands, in the areas that have died of the dying, decaying system, those people will probably be fenced off and, and they'll be living in a quite primitive style lifestyle with no power grid, no probably zero telecommunications, and it'll probably look something uh, like a Mad Max scenarios in those particular areas. And this is what we're heading toward. And this is going to create a bipolarization between the haves and the have-nots. Uh, it's a strange new world that we're going into right now. And we're going in head first really fast. And you're going to really see these things unfold in the next couple of years, big time. Because these problems that we I spoke about earlier are systemic. And they're also working on a exponential curve. In other words, they're getting worse in it at an exponential speed so it's going to yield the results very quickly in the next few years and so we're just on the front edge of this starting to happen the chaos hasn't really begun yet we're not rid of the disease and an awful lot of people are probably blaming all the problems that we have on the disease but the disease is just one of three problems. And all three of these problems are not going away. In fact, they're intensifying. Okay, let's get started with the charts now. Now that I've had my little chat with you guys, uh, let's uh, open up the charts uh, right here and take a look at what's going on. Uh, silver price today. Uh, it's bottomed out. It's made a bottom. It's starting to come back up again a little bit. Uh, looks like it went down to 22 bucks or 22 something. Went down a lot anyway. At 22, I can't. My eyes aren't quite good enough to see. Was it 22.70 or something? So uh, it went down really low, it, 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 and uh, now it's bouncing back up. It's, it's at uh, 23.10 right now, and it's still down 14 cents. 
you know they're keeping the gold and silver price under under check uh gold itself is 11.3 trillion dollar industry uh and of course a lot of that's paper gld and such but uh still it's it's an awful lot still an awful lot bigger than bitcoin bitcoin's only at 800 billion less than a, one trillion it's it's like 12 point something times bigger than crypto than the bitcoin but it's amazing that Bitcoin's got this far right now, even, you know, in 2009 till now to grow to this point where it makes up a one-twelfth of the gold industry. But they, <clears throat> because gold's 12 times bigger and its connection to the financial, in, the, the whole financial industry is, is a connection that's been established over like 7,000 years. So it's massive. And they have to keep that price under control of gold. Otherwise, it'll be a signal, a very clear signal, to a that the currency is becoming worthless. And then people will start to dump the currency, and gold will become unhinged and go a lot even higher. And if that happens, it's doomsday for the dollar, basically. So they can't let that happen. They have to keep gold under check. And they've been showing you lately how they, they can do that by using a paper derivatives product to set the price on gold. Gold is not set from its from actual gold. Gold is not priced from gold. Gold is priced from a derivatives product. So this is a derivatives market right here. This is not a gold market. This is a derivatives market. And that's how they keep the price down. It's by using derivatives instead of the real thing, the real assets. And they can continue to do this in the foreseeable future. In fact, they're going to. Just like they're going to keep the bond yields low, they're going to keep the gold price down as best they can. Might They might have to let it go up some to keep up with mining production costs. Uh, 1784 for gold. Let's take a look at cryptocurrency. You know, eventually they're going to lose control over the price of gold and silver. Silver's going to trigger it. Uh, how that's going to happen is that basically they're going to run out of silver. Silver price is going to go up and gold's going to follow. And they're going to lose control over it because people are starting to uh, lose faith in the purchasing power of, and confidence in their fiat currencies. And when gold and silver become unhinged, then people are going to lose a lot more confidence really quickly. And it's going to spiral out of control. We've only got a matter of months left before that happens. And when that happens, the financial system is going to go through such turmoil, I can't begin to tell you. That's why I named my channel Financial Turmoil Explained for that period in time. It's taken forever to get there. I knew that period in time was coming when I named my channel. But I figured it would be a lot sooner. I figured it would be within two years of me first creating my channel. Now here it's like, what, seven years or something. Or six, six or seven years. And, and it's still going onwards into our future. And I'm still here preaching the same message that I was years and years and years ago. <clears throat> about how this is coming. But now we're so much closer. Now you can see the whites of their eyes. We're getting so close. And now uh, an awful lot more people are talking about it now. The same thing I was talking about years ago. And here it comes. So uh, we're looking at a cryptocurrency market that's, uh, that's really hot right now. Uh, it's over $2 trillion. $2.4 just over two trillion two twenty eighty five today we we're hovering around twenty yesterday now we're twenty eighty five we're looking at a bitcoin price of forty eight thousand three hundred and fifty seven and uh the altcoins are all doing good too today liquidity's drying up in the system at an alarming rate we're having a liquidity crunch so I'm expecting some sort of a, uh, a crash caused by the liquidity crisis. 
in the system. I know they poured all that money in, but an awful lot of it's being stored at the Fed through the re reverse repo market, you know, where the banks are receiving collateral from the Fed. And in exchange for the collateral, they're giving the Fed their liquidity. And you guys know that when I'm talking about liquidity, I'm talking about money. Maybe not in the form of cash, but digital money. That's what most money is now. The vast majority of it's just digital. It's, it's just an exchange ledger. Like your bank account, that's all that is, is a, is a ledger number. They just, they just move the numbers around in the system. If you pay a bill from your bank account, all they're doing is just changing the numbers. That money doesn't exist. Not in the real world. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. 35,067. It's up 173 points on the day. Until this liquidity crunch is over, this market's not going anywhere much. You know, until the liquidity crunch is over. When the liquidity crunch is over, I'm expecting a market melt up. But I'm also expecting that very, very likely we're going to get, between now and then, we're very, very likely going to get some sort of a crash. But then later, there's going to be a melt up. When the hyperinflation really starts to hit, we're going to see a market melt up. But the market's not going to keep up. Gold and silver will keep up. Cryptos will keep up. The market isn't going to keep up even though it melts up. But it's probably a better place to be than keeping your money in, in, the, in the bank. The big losers in this are going to be things, people like pension funds, uh, people that keep their money in the bank, people that hang on to cash, ultimately. You know, uh, they're going to be the real big losers. Big winners are going to be the people that have physical uh, gold and silver, uh, who have cryptocurrencies, and... Uh, Maybe they got their money invested in some places. Uh, maybe maybe the stock market might not be as bad as other alternatives, you know. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, crude oil, 63.03. It's off of 1%. It's down 66 cents. It's been falling lately. Let's take a look at the move index, and it's falling off too. It's at 59.38. Let's take a look at bonds and rates. The mixed bag today. The real long end of the yield curve is uh, is fallen yields uh, from the 10-year to the three-year. We got rising yields. We got a 10-year at 1.25, and we got a 30-year at 1.87. And now to finish off with the dollar index. The dollar index is 93.58 today, and it's basically going along sideways today. Now, uh, you guys can send in your photos of your pets. Monday, I'm starting to put the new pets photos on the channel. And uh, I'll put the uh, link uh, in the description so that you guys can uh, go there to send the pictures of your pets. And we'll catch you guys in the very next show. Bye-bye.